Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are once again talking about that tropical disturbance out there in the Atlantic, and now it's starting to impact the Carolinas and Virginia. We're going to talk all about that throughout this video. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also like to invite you to join our very exciting Discord server and Facebook group in the pinned comment down below. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, which state do you think that this tropical disturbance will impact, if any? If you think it won't impact any states, let me know in the comments down below as well, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get into this video, and we're going to be taking a look at a few model runs on the GFS model here, and this is just our cyclonic vorticity, so the red shades is more rotation going on, things like that, more energy. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look. This model run is actually from 2 a.m. yesterday. Uh, and as you can see, it had a lot of that rotation offshore of New Jersey. Let's move on one more run from there. And as you can see, it trended a little bit further west. Let's move on another one. And it went further west. Another one. And even further west. And then by the time we reach this morning's run, you can see it has gone even further further west and all of those model runs were on the same exact hour so we've seen that the model has been trending further west further west further west i think that was very important to show because now i believe it could continue to trend further west and further west from this point on usually we do not see it stop with the trend so we're gonna need to watch that very very closely but now we're expecting this one to go well on shore of new jersey possibly the delmarva pennsylvania new york maybe not even impacting New England as much as we originally anticipated. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at National Hurricane Center's outlook for the two-day graphical outlook, the five-day graphical outlook, and then beyond then, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some model guidance, things like that. All right, now here's the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and as you can see, we have an 80% chance of development the National Hurricane Center has come out and said we do expect this one to become a tropical depression very, very soon. Uh, so that is what we're anticipating here. But still, model guidance is trending at not reaching tropical storm status and staying a tropical depression. Let's go ahead and look at that five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. And as you can see, still an 80% chance. So we're thinking within the next two days, obviously, we are going to see this one become a tropical depression. Uh, and it's going to head generally northward, but really the model guidance has become a little bit more uncertain. We don't know if this one's going to go onshore, if it's going to kind of do what we've been anticipating this entire time and kind of just stay right offshore of the mid-Atlantic states. We'll talk all about that throughout this video, obviously. Here's that European model probability of tropical depression, and I wanted to show this because it now has a 90 to 100% chance in that deeper red shade there over Virginia, North Carolina, and the coast there. So we are definitely, I'm almost positive that we are going to be seeing a tropical depression at least from this one at this point, and it's going to probably happen actually here on July 9th. It's going to happen probably today. What we're going to do is we're going to move on, take a look at the current satellite imagery, the low pressure location, take a look at some of the spaghetti model guidance, intensity guidance, and then we're going to get into impacts like wind gusts, total rainfall, and our direct weather official forecast. All right, and here we are taking a look at that current satellite imagery. Actually, our low pressure system is located there just south of some of the outer banks uh, but as you can see most of the thunderstorms and clouds are actually to the east of the low pressure system and this would kind of lead me to believe this might be a subtropical system at this point uh, usually you're looking for more balanced uh, on both sides north south east and west of the low pressure system you want to see the clouds everywhere uh, for a tropical system and a subtropical system is usually more uh, just to one side less uh, symmetric I guess you could say so really I think that odds are that this might be a subtropical system, uh, but also it could be a tropical system if it gets it at, its act together. Here's that low pressure center. Uh, as you can see, again, it's kind of to the south of North Carolina there. Uh, so this is going to be heading generally northeastward. By the way, for today's comment of the day, uh, North Carolina does not count. I'm talking about after North Carolina because we are almost certain this one is going to hit North Carolina. I'm talking about for the mid-Atlantic and northeast. I guess that comment of the day is kind of flawed. Anyway. Here's our uh, spaghetti model guidance, and as you can see, actually a lot of these are now showing it kind of head inland uh, after North Carolina and hit the Delmarva, and then kind of track over Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and then go through New York into Canada, not really hanging out in the ocean. But we still have many of these models 
showing it offshore of New Jersey and then hitting New England. So again, we've kind of become more uncertain. There's some models that are in disagreement. So you're going to see at the end of this video that our cone has spread out quite a bit because the models have also spread out quite a bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at that intensity guidance, our GFS ensemble model, the Canadian ensemble model, and then again we're going to get into those impacts. What are our wind gusts going to be, our total rainfall, and also our cone forecast. We're going to get it all into all of that later on in this video. All right, now here we are taking a look at that intensity guidance. As you can see, we're at about 25 knots. We would need to get to about 34 knots to reach tropical storm status. And at this point, you can see there is only about four models that show it reaching tropical storm status, as opposed to about eight or more uh, models here that just don't even have it ever reaching tropical storm status. One of those models, though, that does have us kind of getting close to tropical storm status is the Icon model, which is kind of an up-and-coming model that has been getting better. Uh, so that would be interesting to see if that one is correct. That one has it reaching almost tropical storm status later on in the track. Uh, but... At this point, it does seem more likely that we do not reach tropical storm status and we only reach tropical depression status. All right, here's that GEFS, our GFS ensemble model, spaghetti model guidance. And as you can see, this one likes to keep us kind of just at the Outer Banks and just offshore of, of Southeast Virginia there. And then hitting the Delmarva, hitting New Jersey and Eastern Pennsylvania, pretty much tracking right over Philadelphia and then through New York into Canada, just like some of those other models were showing, the GFS ensemble model is definitely thinking that that's going to be the case. But now let's look at that Canadian ensemble model, and this one keeps it offshore of the Delmarva, offshore of New Jersey, and hitting Long Island and um, coastal New England. You might be wondering which of these tracks is going to be the most impactful, and I would say about equal. We're going to see a stronger storm if it stays offshore, but if it goes up, the Chesapeake Bay, like the GFS is showing, we are going to see more flooding issues, more rainfall for New Jersey and New York City up through upstate New York. So it's going to be different impacts, but I think it would be uh, quite equal if you ask me. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and start talking about those impacts, wind gusts, total rainfall, and also our direct weather cone forecast for this one. Now to start things out here, we are taking a look at those wind gusts, and this is going to be according to our European model. We're going to start things out this afternoon, actually, about 3 p.m. today. As you can see, for a lot of these areas in the blue, that's where we're going to have t uh, 18 to 34 mile per hour gusts, which is getting towards, I guess, moderate wind gust. As you can see, especially there near where our low pressure system is located. So for southeast Virginia, North Carolina, looking at about 30 mile per hour gusts, which is going to be enough to bring some leaves down, some twigs, things like that. So not looking at any damage necessarily, but it is going to be a nuisance windstorm at that point. But as we move towards tomorrow afternoon at about 2 p.m., we're still taking a look at about the 30 mile per hour wind gusts there for southeast Virginia. But take a look at the Delmarva here, according to this model. 40 mile per hour wind gusts there being picked up by those green shades. That would be definitely moving from nuisance to maybe some minor damage being possible here for southern New Jersey and the Delmarva as well, where those green shades are located. And then as we move on towards about Saturday morning, July 11th, you can see those blues are still around for New Jersey and New England, uh, but it wouldn't be as much of that damaging wind that we saw potentially for the Delmarva in New Jersey. That looks like where we would see the peak winds according to this model. Later on, we would see again kind of a return to just the nuisance uh, wind event, but not really much damage. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the total rainfall according to the European model. And this is the trend. The trend, according to the models, is the Delmarva, New Jersey, New York, and then New England getting the most rainfall from this one. Uh, anywhere in the green, you're at about 0.1 to half an inch of rain, so pretty minimal. The blues is half an inch to an inch, which is all we see for North Carolina, portions of Virginia. Uh, but it's as you move towards New England where we see those yellows. That's where you're at anywhere from an inch to about two inches. The reds are two inches to four inches. We get pretty close to those four inch amounts there for a lot of New Jersey, where you can see there's about a three and a half marker there, uh, some areas receiving more, but pretty widespread two to four inch amounts there for the red areas. I would say the um, areas in upstate New York, New York City is in there, pretty much all of New Jersey is in there, a lot of Long Island, portions in western Massachusetts, western Connecticut, 
all up and down New Hampshire and Vermont. So this would be a huge rainmaker and definitely have some major flooding possible for a lot of these regions. And I think this is the most major of the impacts is just the flooding potential here. Three to four inches of rain uh, would be a lot. And I know a lot of these areas are actually in a drought. So it's kind of good news as well. We could really uh, help to, to um, bring some rainfall to those areas that are are in a drought. So that's some very, very good news for you guys. Let's go ahead and move on to our direct weather graphical outlook here. This is for the next seven days. Uh, first off, I want to draw your attention there to the bottom right where we see that we're at, for our low pressure system, we're at about 34.1 degrees north by 76.8 degrees west. We have 28 mile per hour winds now and a 1,007 millibar low pressure system. And that's down by about I would say about five millibars from yesterday morning. So this one has intensified quite a bit. Let's go ahead and look at that track. You can see it again, located there south of the Outer Banks. It's gonna move probably over the Outer Banks, possibly a little bit more onshore than the Outer Banks. It could track over Virginia. It even could go up the Chesapeake Bay there. That's why our cone is extended so far west with the, pro with the possibilities. But we've kept the possibility that it stays over the Atlantic and pretty well offshore of the Delmarva, New Jersey. And there's even a slim chance that it even stays offshore of New England. But I think we're going to see an impact somewhere between the Delmarva and Cape Cod. I think there's going to be an impact somewhere in between those two regions. Uh, so this is spread out with the models. The possibilities have spread out, and I'm going to continue to keep you guys updated with where this one is going to go. I'm very, I guess I'm anticipating to see where this one goes. It's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. Now for yesterday's comment of the day, I asked you guys, uh, how intense do you think this one will get? And Riptide 8 said, I think this will be a tropical depression. I'm excited to see this storm go down here in central Connecticut. I know you guys don't get a lot of tropical systems a lot and you guys have had a lack of rain. So I'm excited for you to get some rain finally uh, and get to see uh, this tropical system move into your area. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.